On the surface of the earth and in the sea, an endless energy war is being fought. All living beings need energy in order to maintain their vital functions. The plants obtain it from the sun and the soil. Vegetarian animals steal it from the plants when they eat them, and the predators in turn take it from these by hunting them. But in order to seize the energy from another living being, it is almost always necessary to kill it. The system is based on the fact that all living matter is composed of the same basic components. Arranged in one way, they form a tree. Placed in another way, they are an iguana. And structured in a third way, they are a black jaguar. When the black jaguar eats the iguana, it is stealing its basic building blocks in order to incorporate them into its own body and so continue living. In reality, the iguana dies only as an individual because in terms of energy and matter, it continues to live as part of the jaguar. Therefore, the death of an animal is, in ecological terms, no more than a transfer of matter and energy from one organism to another. The prey must try to avoid this, while for the predator it is a trade-off, a deal from which it must gain in energy terms. If hunting the iguana and defending it from competitors uses up more energy than that to be gained from eating it, he's not interested. For many species is that everyone wants to eat them. There are branches of the animal kingdom such as the rabbits or the rodents for example which due to their intermediate size and abundance are constantly under the threat of being captured on land, in the sea and in the air. The biologists call this being at the base of the ecological pyramid but to you and me it's simply living dangerously. This rodent is called a hutia and in these wetlands on the island of Cuba, it forms part of the daily menu of its neighbors, the crocodiles. For the hutiers, risking their lives every time they come out is perfectly normal. They have to constantly cross the channels in order to carry out their daily activities. Humans in a similar situation would suffer from unbearable stress, but for this type of species, living with death is routine. Animals do not fear death, for that would prevent them from living. They simply seek to avoid it as much as possible, and success as a species means at least as many being born as those that die. True death, in genetic terms, is extinction. We may be surprised at how unperturbed the Hutia is by the constant presence of bloodthirsty killers, but it's not much different from the average citizen's attitude to traffic accidents. Like us, this Hutia simply thinks it won't happen to him. In reality, the crocodile hasn't seen it, yet. Now the important thing is to remain calm. It escaped this time, but it and its fellow Hutias will have to cross the trunk several times a day. The life expectancy of a hutia in captivity is three years, but here in the wild virtually none reach that age. Until the instant before being devoured, a hutia is a perfectly happy creature. They do not live tormented by the threat of dying at any moment. They simply don't think about it. They fulfill their biological obligation and are a successful species because for each one that dies, three or four are born. 
nature has compensated by making them very prolific. Otherwise, they would have disappeared entirely from the face of the earth a long time ago.